This video takes a further look at Hammer and Chord, an effect from my JSFX set. Hammer and Chord is a string resonator simulation. It can be used as a typical synthesizer producing sound from just MIDI notes, and for more information about that see part 1 of this video pair. In this video, however, we're going to focus on using Hammer and Chord as a MIDI controlled audio effect that resonates incoming sound. Most of the controls are the same for both uses, so if this video doesn't cover something, go back and check part 1. We'll start with Hammer and Chord acting like a synthesizer. When we play some MIDI notes, it produces a pluck sound. This pluck sound is controlled by the impulse section here. If we turn the volume rights down, we get no sound output. A virtual string is still being created for this note, it's just that nothing is making it resonate. So here we have an audio track with a kick drum sample on it. To use this sound as an impulse to get the string moving, I'm going to drag this track so it's now a child track of the other one. We could swap things round so the audio is on the parent track and the MIDI on the child, or use routing, but it doesn't matter. The point is, both audio and MIDI are now flowing into hammer and chord. Let's have a listen. Nice, so we have the same virtual string, but instead of hammer and chord producing its own pluck sound, it's using the audio that's going into the effect. Let's see what happens if I don't use a single sound, but in fact a whole drum loop. So what used to be a drum loop is now a synth playing a rhythm, and the different drum sounds produce different timbres on the string. Now let's try a different audio source. I'm going to add a pink noise generator before hammer and chord. As you can hear from that short burst, pink noise is just a big hiss with no notes in it. But what would it sound like if we use a string to resonate pink noise? So that's interesting, but we've completely lost the pluck sound because pink noise just keeps on going. If we want to get that pluck back, we can use this decay dial down here. The default value doesn't decay at all, but if we change it, then each virtual string only takes input from the beginning of the note and ignores later input. Let's have a listen. So now we have our pluck sound back because it's using a short burst of pink noise at the beginning of the note and then ignoring the rest. Let's try a polyphonic input. And let's twiddle the timbre a bit to see what we can get. If we change our pink noise to stereo mode, we get a cool stereo pluck. And that's as an EQ to soften it a bit. Next, let's get rid of that pink noise source and go back to our kick drum for a second. Kick drums can be great for bass lines, but we don't want to have to arrange this kick drum all over our audio channel once for each note. So instead, we're going to trigger the kick drum on every MIDI note using Resamplematic. So now our drum sound triggers on every note. Now when we move this before hammer and chord, the kick drum will be the impulse used to pluck our virtual strings. It sounds a bit boomy, so we're going to use this decay dial here again, so only the beginning of each kick drum is used. Awesome. This decay dial is also useful if our MIDI input's polyphonic, because it means each note ignores later impulses that are intended for different notes. So, we've had drums and pink noise. What else can we put through this? How about some speech? So here is a clip of me saying something. Something. And here that is resonated through a MIDI chord. Something. So, you can hear the chord there, but you can also hear the original pitch of my voice fairly clearly. Fortunately, we have something that might help. This detonal filter. This actually ring modulates the input against band limited noise. Something. So it's a slightly different sound, and it's not clean, but it is atonal and it's interesting, I'm sure you can find a use for it. If you're hoping for a clean vocoder like sound, then check out my other effect, Humonica. You can resonate pretty much anything with hammer and chord, so I've had good fun using it with recordings I've made outside of the studio. For example, here is a close up of a fireplace I made a few Christmases ago.
Let's add Springbox for a bit of space and see what Hammer and Chord does to it. Here is some thunder that I recorded a while ago. And here it is with Hammer and Chord. So that's how to use Hammer and Chord with audio input. I hope you make some cool stuff with it. If you're interested in more, check out my other videos for other effects, or subscribe for future ones. The description below has links for installing my effects or some presets, and if you're using and enjoying my effects or my videos and want to say thanks, there's a link where you can send a donation. But most of all, have fun making music!